It's time to take command with former NFL tight end Logan Paulson and former Commander's Beat reporter Craig Hoffman. Take command instant reaction show. I am Craig Hoffman. He is Logan Paulson. And um, Logan, that was not good. Um, no. that, was, that was definitively bad. Um, we do not like it. Uh, 31-19, the final score of what I think is the worst loss of the Ron Rivera era. And that's saying something. They've had some bad losses. Yeah. But, you know, we've talked about how this Giants team was uh, was not very good. Um, Tommy DeVito's their starter. He's a third-string quarterback. Yeah. Uh, they really only have Saquon Barkley as a, um, as, a, as a threat. And Barkley does a lot of damage today. Mm -hmm. Defense can't get stops, and then obviously there is a huge turnover problem that right. probably is the biggest story of the game. Yeah, for me it's the turnovers, obviously, and I think it's it's uh, it's disappointing. You know, it's a disappointing outcome. I think you know if you listen to the pregame show, you listen to the preview pod. I think you know fans understand kind of how we felt about this matchup going into this game, and I think you know looking at what Wink Martindale did defensively, I think he deserves a lot of credit. You know, he did a good job of kind of presenting this expectation of he's going to pressure a lot. He didn't pressure as much as he'd done in the first matchup through the. First first two and a half quarters and then kind of what he had to have it. he brought pressure in some really well designed scheme pressures that forced Sam kind of into an uncomfortable situation and he put the ball in harm's way and I got the sense just from watching you know that um, Sam was kind of pressing for stuff that he didn't need to press for and that leads, leads to turnovers and um, you know disappointing outcome to say the least so yeah um, I mean the turnovers are the big deal so let's let's just try to make sense of it. I don't sure. know if there's like I don't know if there's anything to make sense of like yeah. you, they fumbled the football multiple times and you have to hold on to it um, is that a kind of thing that can be like a technique issue that you can circle back to coaching or like is it a player just like hey man hold on to the ball right. like I, I the analysis I feel like on fumbles can't be that deep but I mean it also is extremely important to, to talk about because there's three of them in the game and then we can talk about Sam's interceptions as well yeah I feel like the fumble to me were like effort fumbles I felt like there was a little bit of um, kind of anxiety you know when yeah. the guys got the ball like they're trying a little bit extra trying to get that extra yard uh, the one with Chris Rodriguez specifically sticks out to me breaks a tackle breaks another tackle is kind of going to the ground ball comes out yeah, the P-Robs that, that the commanders recovered Correct. was the same way yeah 100% and I think Pringles was a lot like that he gets a little bit of grass in there on the kickoff return and the ball comes out because he's fighting for extra yards and I do think when guys start to press when guys start to play outside of themselves a little bit that's the result is the first thing to go is ball security. So on all three of those fumbles that we just mentioned, um, you know, that was the thing that stuck out to me is like they were just over trying. And I think the interceptions are kind of the same way for Sam. Yeah. Sometimes just take what's there. And I just felt like there was a lot of anxiety around the team in this game that uh, I wasn't expecting to see. And you could tell that as the game went on, everyone got a little bit more anxious. Everyone kind of like, I need to make a play. I need to do something spectacular. And um this was the result, you know, it was just guys not taking care of the football at a good enough level. And I don't care who you are, man. Like, I, I really think the defense did some interesting stuff in this game from a pressure standpoint, nine sacks, they obviously. They had nine sacks, so. And they, they did some good stuff, you know, outside of the explosive plays. But you can't just give any offense six extra bites at the apple in short field situations. It's just not good football, like, on, on any level. So, like, as much as we want to sit here and analyze, it's got to take care of the ball. Got to take care of the ball. Yeah. Doesn't matter who you're playing. Uh, ball, ball security is job security. So I know everyone wants us to torch the defense, but at the end of the day, it's not 31 on the defense. You have the pick six by Simmons at the end. Yeah. And you just said six extra possessions for yeah. the Giants. I mean, that's absurd to try to ask a defense that we know is short staffed. Like, in some ways, the excuse for the defense is we already know they're not very good. Yeah. And, you know, that is not like instead of just being like, they suck. Like, I want you to listen to the words that are coming out of my <laughs> mouth. They're not very good. Right. But we know that going in. That is a known commodity. And again, it is something that Rivera talked about this week. And you know, part of the reason that in his words, his job is on shaky ground. It is why it is very likely Jack Del Rio. I mean, almost certainly. Let's be, let's be uh, adults about this. Almost certainly Jack Del Rio's last year here in Washington. And they're going to have to answer that at the end of the season. But if you're trying to win games now, you have to win them within the contract offered. And not taking care of the football is the biggest reason right. why that happens today. 
And I think the pressing comes from it, it felt like an offense that couldn't find a rhythm. And 100%. I think it's hard to, to kind of separate the chicken from the egg here. Do they press because they turn it over? They turn it over on their first two drives, 100%. right? So are they pressing because they turn the football over? Or are they turning the football over because they're pressing mm-hmm. and it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy and they can't ever get out of the, the hell loop? I, d- I definitely think it's a little bit of both. And I've been on teams where this is the thing is you, you, you're, you're, you know the stakes of the game. You know you should win the game and you are down and you don't have the maturity as a team and that's nobody's fault. You know, they got a young quarterback, all those different things. You don't have the maturity to kind of say, hey, man, take a breath. We, we are mature football players. We've been in this situation before. It's like, uh, Junk suppose this game to the Philadelphia game and right. what Philadelphia did when they were down in both games. When they're down, they have two turnovers. There's never a moment of panic or stress or strain. Like, that's a mature, well-coached, well-designed football team. And this was not that. I think you see a lot of kind of the youth here, a lot of the inexperience, and this was the result. And as much as, you know, we want to kind of get on the defense, they had nine sacks, they had zero, they held the, the Giants to zero yard rushing through three quarters. Yeah. And then they have that explosive run. And I just felt like there was a, there was a, I, and I've been, I've been on teams like this too, where the offense isn't doing what they're supposed to do, and there's like a moral, like a, like a letdown. You can almost feel the air go out of the yep. defense. The and dam breaks. Yes, and I, I thought that's like exactly what happened in that situation on that long Saquon Barkley run. So as much as you know, we can be critical of the defense and be critical of what they did today to me, and again, I always kind of lean this way, and I, don't know, sure. I, I know Sam Howell is a young football player, but this is an offensive loss. You know, you can't turn the football over. Hundred like percent. Uh, and five of them, of course, on offense. One, the yes. one on special teams with Pringle uh, from an offensive player, uh, if you will, as the wide receiver. But yeah, I mean, and and this is, I would say, though, the difference in good and bad teams is good teams play four quarters worth, and bad teams can. It's not like bad teams can't compete at all. Bad teams are good for two and a half, three right. quarters, and and then at the end they can't put it together, and or bad units in this particular case with the defense, and this is kind of who they have been. But even then, I mean, I don't know the big plays late that that's a killer, and yep. I think it's it's hard because that has been consistent, and they can't stop it, right. and that's that's the thing where it's just like. I don't know what you try at this point. I asked Rivera about that. I'm sure yeah. you heard me ask that post game. It was the last question of Rivera's press conference. And I asked him, like, how do you try to put together a plan when there's no consistent execution? And I wasn't specific offense or defense. And he was just kind of like, you know, there's a lot of things you think about. And the inconsistency is one of them, which is basically an admission that, like, yes, I can't say uh, much more than what you said, but yeah. you're on to something there. Um, but then I think there's, again, like the chicken or the egg thing. Mm-hmm. Of, and this, to me, is more a, a talk about the offense, specifically to this game. Um, are they inconsistent because the coaches are not optimizing the positions of success? And that is, that's hard to decipher, right? Because yeah. you do have a team full of average-ish level players in a lot of spots, and that means you're going to have some good and you're going to have some bad. But you also have a coaching staff that has not optimized any of this, and thus, are they uncomfortable? Are they not confident in what they're doing? Is the up-and-down play because they're not consistently put in positions to succeed? It's a mix of both. It's unknowable. It changes play-by-play on, on some of this stuff. Um, but defensively, it doesn't it doesn't seem like there even is a possible solution um, cause like, I don't know what it is. And that was, you know, if, if we had more time to talk to Ron and he was in a chattier mood, I honestly, I he looked get, like, uh, he looked like he wanted to cry in that dude, press conference. I mean, that's a, I would have given a little, uh, that's the last place I would want to be if I was him Yeah, in front of those guys talking, answering those questions. That's, and that's part of the gig and that's part of the job, but that's a tough, that's a tough game to come out of. I mean, he's not a dummy. He knows exactly what the situation is there. And, um, he knows that that wasn't good enough. And it's, it's so tough. I think for us as well, because we are fans of this team we want to cover good football we want to cover yes. a win more than anything because like that's we, we root for these guys and you know in some ways i root for ron and it's tough man it's tough to see him like that it's tough to see that the team perform that way and um it's really really hard and again it's there's not like a definitive answer like that giants team is not as good as this team yeah like the the commander should have won that game and, and there's not a lot of you can't do anything to convince me otherwise, really. You know, they played well today, and they deserved the win. I thought Wink called an excellent game. He deserves a ton of credit. I thought uh, Tommy DeVito did a great job in terms of kind of handling the adversity early, and I thought... 
Kafka did a good job of calling plays and finding explosive opportunities for him that are kind of like layups. You know, it's they run a leak. They run a they yep. they run, basically run the leak twice out of different formations with different personnel. Yeah, they run a fullback one and then they get the receiver on the other one. Hundred percent, and that's good coaching. It's saying this worked for us. How many ways can we get this in to win this freaking football game? And that's what they did. So as much as uh, you know, I just don't know what to say really. Other than that, it's the turnovers, it's the explosive plays, it's the lack of consistency with this group. And I know that's what Ron said, but that's what it's been. No, it's it's the truth. I mean, there is no other way around it. Um, on offense, so I talked to a couple guys, like no mics, no cameras, no nothing yeah. after the game. And, you know, you ask them how they felt. And I think some of the, the things that come up about the offense in this game is um, they like the Giants played very differently than they did the first time. Mm-hmm. And 100%. I think that there is a bit of a feeling that they did not take advantage of the opportunities there. I mean, that's not exactly like I don't need to be coy about that. Duh, we yeah. watched what happened out there. Yeah. Like, they did not take advantage of the opportunities uh, that were there. But the reasons why seem to be like, hey, like, they played a lot more zone and, like, we know how to beat zone, but we didn't do the stuff that we need to do to beat yeah. zone. Um, you know, there wasn't as much pressure. We didn't adapt. And I think the thing that, that is sometimes frustrating to me in this game, certainly it comes to, to be with Eric Bienemy and the way he calls a game is when he can get into that rhythm of the thing he likes, right? Mm-hmm. And this is true for any play caller, mm-hmm. right? I think the great ones are the the ones who can overcome this, mm-hmm. right? But you go into a, a week with a plan and it's like, this is the plan. We feel good about it. You know, that's why that's why it's the plan, right? You don't go into the week being like, oh, I don't know, maybe it'll work. Like you go in with yeah. a, a plan that you like and if it works, like he can get into a rhythm and a groove and like it cooks and you're like this is the best offense i've ever seen but when it's not that and you can't find that thing that is working for you where they shut down the thing that you thought was going to work you have to be able to adjust and get to the next thing and i don't think they have done a good job all year long of getting to the next thing and that is why this offense at times looks phenomenal and other times looks like it looked today yeah, and I think that's something that's really hard, and I think it's important to remember that he's a first-time play caller, yep. and they're going to have some of these adversities. And you know, in, in my play calling experience, which is very, very limited, the thing that comes out is you have a plan in the week, and everything you read about calling plays is you want to make sure that you are designing an offensive game plan in the week. You're going to do your best work on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You don't want to be doing stuff on the sideline, in the dirt, on the sand. And so you go in and you say, man, I'm have this great plan for this coverage that they run, whatever, and they augment that. So it's important to kind of say, like, as a play caller this is what i think they're going to do this is what happens if they deviate this is what they do if they play zone right or like in in this game example we are going in to beat man coverage and pressure looks if they don't bring that what happens if they play more zone what are we going to do and i should have five to ten plays on the back burner that we've discussed that I can get to. And I think that's kind of what you're alluding to, is just what is the process when it doesn't go right. exactly quick, the way you it's want. It's very clear quick game is what they want to do today, right? Mm-hmm. It's not there. The Giants zoned it up. They they had guys underneath to play those coverages, um, and it wasn't there. Like, how do you get it's to so, I, the shots? How do you get to whatever it is that are the other solutions for the types of coverages that they've thrown at you? Once you also realize oh my God, Wink Martindale is actually not coming with immense amounts of pressure yeah. and he's being way more selected. How do we take advantage of that thing? I think that's that's where a more mature play caller like has an advantage, right? Because it's like, oh, hey, well, we, we installed this, but we can easily augment what we did here to kind of match this zone. Hey, and I think that's that's something you're probably kicking yourself a little bit about. You're, you're so dialed in on saying, this is what Wink Martindale is going to do. Man, pressure. And so you over prep that. And you forget this other stuff in your offense. You forget the five steps. You forget the shot plays because you're like, well, we got to get him out of this. And then he comes out and he does something completely different. And you spent so much time in the week coaching for X that you have nothing for Y. And I've been a part of teams where that's happened. Yeah. And it's devastating because you literally have nothing. There's like nothing you can go to that you feel comfortable going to. And with smart teams that have been in the offense for a while, you can. It's easy. You say, oh, hey, we're just going to run what we did last week. See these four or five plays? You remember these? Let's get these called. But with teams that aren't that experienced offensively, new offensive scheme, new personnel at a lot of spots, it, it's really hard, especially with a young quarterback. So um, it seems like 
again, I give credit to Wink Martindale and the Giants. They deserve that credit. They came out and they said, we are going to subvert expectations and we are going to throw a monkey wrench in the plan. And it's not like they didn't bring pressure. They were much more selective about when they brought pressure. And the pressure they brought was great. And Dexter Lawrence was a problem all day for this offensive line. And it's just, I think this is one of the byproducts of having a first-year play caller, independent of everybody else. And so, um, again, credit to Wink Martindale. And this is this is tough. I, I wish I had a better answer, Craig, for your question. But yeah. it's, this does happen. And this is the feeling you get after a performance like that.